G'day guys, Adam Kogan here from SSW TV and today we're talking about GitHub issues and GitHub projects and GitHub labels and all that good stuff about managing a project. Uh, in our case, we do almost all our projects using Scrum and getting this right is super important and we like to be consistent across all our projects too. So historically we used you know, Jira and that worked well and then we used uh, TFS and then Azure DevOps and these days the majority of our projects are on GitHub, whether that's public or private. And uh, you know, there are a series of uh, rules here that you can look through and see how that works, but let me just tell you the most important parts. The most important one is to have a nice, managed, pruned, gorgeous to look at backlog. And here is uh, one that looks all right. Is that, uh, I can see they're using nice emojis and things, is that good luck or good management? Well, you can click on new issue and work that out. And let's click on it. Oh, that's good luck. They can enter anything they want in the title, description, labels could be anything, who knows what they're going to do. Um, but of course, someone's gone and done all the hard work after. Let's have a look at this one. This is a brand new one. Is this going to be a nice, um, friendly to use backlog? So we're going to click new issue and you'll see, oh, hello here. We have uh, some nice templates and this is what you should be using. Most brand new users are going to give you either a new feature or a new bug. And so they'll use the top two. Uh, the dev team will also use those, but that, in addition, they'll use documentation, refactoring, DevOps. Now, you also want the customer to know to, where to put questions, because it's not always a new feature or a new bug that they want. They just want a question answered. And one of the things that you sometimes see teams do incorrectly is they tell you to put the question in the issues. Uh, but a better way of doing it is to use discussions. And if uh, customers don't know to do that, then give them a link, you know, click on this support forum, ask for something, and that then it will pop open with this and they can ask their questions here. It's quite, quite nice. Now back to the other choices I recommend you put at the bottom, contact us, make it clear if you want, if they want paid support, click contact us, there is a link that will open up some link that will tell them to enter their details and you know, it'll be a commercial arrangement. Uh, there is a final one that I add here, which is just to tell everyone in the community how to set this up. And that is this guy here. And it says, you know, do you use issue templates? You should. Otherwise, you're going to get, you know, uh, anything people want to enter. And that is a bad example. Here is a much nicer one. That person has been given a guided experience. They enter their pain, what they think should happen, and they include a screenshot. So that's, they just get a bit of prompting. In addition, you'll see that um, you know, the label is set up and things like that. So let's move on to one other use of templates. And at the end of a sprint, we do a sprint review and then we send a summary. Now, some people do that via an email. Some people just have a discussion. Um, we send it not as an email. This is a bad example. Here is a better example that you set up a template and you do a sprint review and then at the beginning, you do a sprint forecast. So here is a review with it set up, fill in all these fields, and this is how you do it. So that's um, a really nice way of doing it. So let's move on to uh, GitHub projects. GitHub projects are a really nice way to organize your issues. You can see that here you can add extra fields, uh, you can give an estimate, you can uh, put in labels. So that is uh, a much nicer way of managing that. If you click on one of these guys, uh, an issue, you'll end up on the issue, and there is the issue, but on the right hand side, down under here, projects, you will see the extra metadata that you've put there. And you can add extra fields that you want. It's very simple to add an extra field. Come over here, you get a little plus button that will allow you to add an extra field. So all that is described here also in how to, how to use Scrum for GitHub projects. And uh, it's, a, it's really nice and it actually keeps getting better and better. It shows you how to set the thing up and uh, it's fairly, fairly simple to set up and use. All right, let's talk about um, the next thing that I want to kind of agree on, and that's the labels. This one is a little hard to get people to agree on. So if we go new issue and we're a new customer and going, I have a bug report. 
So I'm going to click on Get Started, and then I end, I've got some nice information here on what they want. They want the repro steps. They want a description here. They've already set the emoji, and we also have the label already set up as Type Bug, and in this case, it's red. So that is essentially how that gets set. Uh, now, to get that right across all your projects in your company, uh, you need to go the next step. So to get these labels right for your project, you want to agree with the team on what labels you want. I, I'm a big fan that the ones that are set by the template have the type. The type is set. And all the, there's the one you saw before, type bug, but they're all set here. And in this case, there is five of those. Now, they can only, only have one of those per issue. Of course, you could put more, but you know, the, the way that you should use it is just one of these. These ones can have multiples. Uh, now, you can see that we've only really got three other labels. So other than the ones for the templates, there is three, the back end, the front end, and good first time issue. Good first time issue does not have a prefix, and that's because that's a general convention in GitHub to allow new enthusiastic people that have joined the project to find something that's easy to knock off, learn how the project works, and then they can get into more meaty ones. In addition, when you are running many teams, like we run here at SSW, uh, you want to have those labels consistent across all the projects, and you come down here to repository defaults, and then you set them up. And you can see in our case, we have the exact same labels. We have the, the five types and the extra three. So that's what you want to get right. You can argue all day long about you know, what colors and how many of these and you know, whether you want other ones. But you try to keep it less because this eight is pretty impressive. Some projects you'll see there's 40 or 50 labels. It feels like label hell. So let's look at the rule on labels. Uh, that's here describes basically what I've said to you and a little bit more. Uh, on the rule and you can get a handle on that and make that decision. Now that brings us to the end of the, the core things. There's a lot more rules on this and how to work. You can read all these. Uh, I do find uh, this one uh, funny, uh, the commit messages, because the more younger guys you bring into the team, the more they love emojis. And you can see this particular rule about writing commit messages. We've got a video on this talking about how to use emojis to make your commit messages friendly and meaningful. Uh, in Microsoft Teams, we have you know, emojis on many of the team names. Uh, it's funny, in the GitHub issues, we also have emojis in them as well. Uh, one thing that I do find curious is developers don't like emojis on labels. I don't know why, but here it seems to be a bridge too far to be putting emojis onto labels. But anyway, you can comment uh, if you disagree with that, uh, that uh, approach or what you think about uh, labels and emojis and all the good stuff that I've just uh, talked about. Um, I'm super keen to learn. I'm sure everyone else is too. So uh, I will see you in the next one. This is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV.